Let's code a Linktree clone. We're gonna use HTML CSS to code a clone of a Linktree page. It is gonna be using HTML CSS concepts that I'm gonna walk you through. And the website is gonna look just like your average Linktree website. You're gonna have your profile image there, your name and the links, and we're gonna have a little hover action. So when we actually hover over it, you can see a little bit of responsiveness. So we're gonna go into hover effects and things like that. And you're gonna walk away feeling a lot more confident in several HTML CSS concepts. I know some people are like, I just want the code. Give me the code, give me the code, give me the code. I know a lot of people just want the code and they just want to copy the code and get a little project down that they can show off. And that's fine if that's something you want to do. I'd rather you understand the entire picture than just to copy some code. But if the code is the only thing that you're looking for, and no matter what I say, I can't persuade you to stick around and actually learn what's happening so you understand what's going on, go to the timestamp. I'm gonna have everything stamped out so that way you can just copy the code off the screen. I have some screenshots there so you can copy it and you can be content and happy. But right now, I'm gonna walk everyone through the logic of what we're doing. And I think you're gonna walk away feeling a lot more confident in several HTML CSS concepts. Let's get into this. So the only thing I've done as of right now is I've created an index.html page where we're going to be putting all of our HTML code. And I have an image here that I'm going to be using as my profile image right here. So you can use any image that you want. Now, a really cool trick that I'm going to show you is utilizing Emmett Smiths, right? And one thing that you can do to get your boilerplate text for your HTML page is use an exclamation point and then go ahead and press enter. And then you're gonna get all of this text right here. Then I'm gonna go right here and I know I'm gonna be making a style.css sheet where I'm gonna be putting our CSS context, but we're not gonna use this as of right now, but this link here links your style.css page to your actual page. So make sure you have that in. And I'm gonna be naming this my tree. So I'm gonna put the title here and basically by putting that text in the title at the top of your Chrome tab, uh, it's gonna showcase whatever name that you decide to put there. Oh, did you know that over 70% of you are not subscribed to the channel? Hit that like button, helps me out the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more future videos like this. So I'm gonna add some comments for the things that we're gonna be doing. So I know the main page is kind of broken up into three sections, right? We're gonna have one section that we're gonna be putting our profile image on, right? So the profile photo to be centered on a page in a circular shape. Then we have a graying your name, so the profile name that you want listed. And then we're gonna have four link bars stretched fully across the page. Key thing here is we want them to be responsive, so we need to pay attention to that. So let's start attacking these three things. So I wanna go ahead and hit the profile photos first. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a div, and that class image there is gonna be profile image container. So I'm a big fan of utilizing very descriptive names because immediately as you read this, you automatically know, oh, this is the profile image container, right? So it's gonna be the container that we're utilizing for for our profile image. Very intuitive. You don't necessarily need any documentation or anything to figure that out. Descriptive names are usually the best practice that you can ever have, and that should be a habit that you start developing early on in your uh, career. I'm gonna go ahead and add our image and the source. Since it's in the same folder, we don't need to add, list a different folder, and we could just call it as profile.jpg, the name that I've added here. You wanna add an alt text because when an image doesn't show up, the alt text will be displayed, but also on top of that, that alt text is read by screen reader. So if somebody's seeing impaired and they're utilizing a screen reader, the screen reader will tell them what that image is. And so here I added handsome developer dressed in a beautiful gray suit with a glorious beard because who are we kidding? And I added the class of profile image. And so from here now we're attacking the profile name that we're gonna have. So I'm just gonna go ahead and name the class of name since it's very simplistic. And I added an H3 for mine and I put the name there. Now we're going to attack the four link bar. So I'm adding my first div and the first div is going to be an, and it's an anchor tag that's linking to my LinkedIn profile. And I have my LinkedIn profile there. Adding my second div that is going to Twitter. Third div going to Twitch. Adding my fourth div and that's going to YouTube. And as of right now, this is pretty much all of the HTML that I want on the page. So I go ahead and save that. And now what we're gonna do to display this and see exactly what we've created, what you can do is go here to your extensions and add the extension live server. It's gonna be the one that has purplish icons. So you can see this one right here and you're gonna install that. And by installing that, it gives you the functionality to right click on your HTML page and open with live server. And when I bring that over here, we can see that as of right now, our profile image is showing, our H3 tag for our name is there, and our four links are there. And obviously when we hover over, it's redirecting us to the URL that we wanna be. So now we need to go ahead and start styling this up. So how are we gonna do that? First thing we need to do, if you remember up top here, we created a style sheet. So we need to go ahead and create that style sheet that it's linking to. So we'll go ahead and press con Control N for a new file. 
and we're going to go ahead and save it as style.css. And now we have our style sheet that is created and it's in the same name that we have here. So that way we're making sure that it's picked up. All right. So what we're going to do now is the first thing that we need to do is pay attention to our body. So we're going to go ahead and get our body tags in there. And from the body tag, I copied a gradient that we're going to be using for the page. So just to view, we can go ahead and save that and go back to our copy that we have. And we now see this gradient, right? It's like a, a white color going to like this purple color. And to be completely honest with you, I'll be the first one to tell you, I'm not the best when it comes to generating color palettes or matching a color scheme to a website. I can barely match the colors of my clothes. So matching a website color scheme is not happening. But what you can use is colors.co. It's one of my favorite websites and they have tons and tons of palettes. And I really loved the colors on this page. So I go, went ahead and borrowed a couple of these colors to generate the um, gradient that I'm using. So uh, this is like a little tool that you can utilize for yourself, uh, but you can find tons and tons of palettes and options on this website right here. And you can kind of see here on the trending page, there's tons of palettes and different combinations and colors that you can use that go together um, that will make your life significantly easier. So one thing I want to stop is as we just saw, the background was repeating. So by adding this no repeat, and I'll go ahead and save this, by adding that, it is now no longer repeating. And once it gets to the extent of the size of the image, it's going to go ahead and cut itself off. So we're going to go ahead and add a height of 100%. This 100% represents 100% of the page. And now we're going to move on to our profile image. So if you remember, we had our class over here of profile image for the image source. So we're going to go ahead and now add a border radius to that image. Border radius of 50%. It now gives us the circle effect on our image. That one little line completely changed everything. And now I want to go ahead and move on to the container. And I'm using Flexbox. Flexbox is going to give me the power and the ability to completely control on a horizontal row everything that I'm uh, trying to move over. So I'm using a display of flex. This activates Flexbox and I'm aligning my content center. And by doing that, I'm also justifying the content in center. And this now gives me everything right here. And I'm adding a height of 200 pixels. So it's reducing the size of that image compared to the big size it was before. So that way it can all kind of flow well together. Now I want to work on the name. I'm adding my display of flex, my line content center, justify content center, and I'm adding a color for my name. I'm adding a font family because I don't like the standard font family that we're utilizing here. And I'm using Arial and Sans Serif. And I'm using a font size of 1.5 rem. So to give you an idea, one rem represents 16 pixels, right? It allows it to be very uniform and responsive. So by adding one and a half, I'm basically saying I want it to be 24 pixels. Now I want to go ahead and work on our links. So I'm using the display of flex, align content center, justify content center, the same thing that we've been using each time. I'm adding a border around all of them. I want it to be one pixel in width. I want it to be white and I want it to be solid. So now if I come back to our page here, as of right now, everything is centered. All the links are there. I'm adding a background color to the links and I want text decoration to be none because if you see right now, before I press save, if you see right now, all the links have this blue and this underline. And if you've been to a past link, it shows the, the past color. I want to go ahead and remove all of that. So we'll go ahead and save that and we'll go ahead and hit our font size and our color. And now if we come back, our links are white. We have this entire thing looking professional, but it's still way too close together. We want to go ahead and space this thing out. So we're going to add a margin of 30 pixels. This now reduces everything down, but I want to go ahead and separate the things on the inside. If you've had confusion in the past with margin and padding, I just released a 50 second video that explains everything in detail when it comes to margin versus padding link in the description. Check that out. So I'm going to go ahead and add my padding there. And I, now I want to add a hover effect. Basically what I want to happen is when I hover over anything on this page, I want it to respond in a certain way. So as we can see, after we added the size of our links, right? 
everything responded accordingly and where it was white here before it now extended because if we go back up here our height is a hundred percent meaning a hundred percent of whatever the body is is going to extend our background color there and now if i hover over the links nothing really happens and we don't necessarily know that um we're hovering over this so i want to kind of give a little bit of feedback and so what i want to go ahead and do here is i'm using transform property meaning I want to transform the size of this link and I want it to scale, meaning the change that I want to occur to 1.02, meaning ever so slightly, I want to go ahead and make this link a little bit bigger. So if I come and save that and come back here, when I hover over it, you now see these links are getting slightly bigger. And one thing I just want to add to make it look really clean We'll go ahead and add a box shadow here. So the box shadow that I'm adding is just a little bit of color. I'm using RGBA values. So with this RGBA 000 means black and the alpha channel, which means the transparency level of this color, I'm putting at 0.8. So I don't want it to be super prominent, just a little, you know, a little transparent. I now hover over this and you see that shadow coming at the bottom. So you, the user clearly knows that they're hovering over this thing and it adds a little pristine look. And just like that, you now have a complete HTML, CSS version of a Linktree project. And for those that just want the code, here you go. This is all the HTML code. Go ahead and pause it so you can copy. This is the first page of the CSS code. So go ahead and pause so you can copy. This is the last part of the CSS code. So you can go ahead and pause and copy. But please understand the logic of what you're copying. I don't want you to be confused by what's happening here. Hope you really enjoyed this video. And if you got what you wanted out of this, fantastic. Do you know what the average day looks like for a software developer? If not, I completely vlogged all the technical things that I do on a daily basis for my job and walked you through several work tickets. If that interests you, check the link in the description or go ahead and click right here. Go ahead. Why, why are you still here? Click it. Why are you here? Click it. Now.